Hi guys, my name is Emma and let's talk spooky stuff. <laughs> Disclaimer! <laughs> I am not a metalhead. Uh, I actually didn't know anything about Mayhem before I watched this film. I went completely blind. Um, I knew it was based on facts, but I didn't know the story, which I think really improved the movie for me because, my god, is it a story. But this video is talking about my opinions on the film. And I've seen a lot of heavy metal, black metal trolls on videos of trailers and interviews with the cast and director um, talking about how bad it is, blah blah blah. We're gonna keep the facts to your videos and right here is just my opinion. I talk about horror movies on this channel and hi if you're a troll, hi if you're one of my faby faves, you know who you are, my supporters. And let's just get into this because I have a lot to talk about. Lords of Chaos is a 2018 biopic drama horror film directed by Jonas Ukeland based on the 1998 non-fiction book of the same name. And yes, it is horror. The film is based in Oslo, Norway and follows the rise and fall of true Norwegian black metal band Mayhem. Also just a note, it is in English with mainly American American actors who do not have any accent. But more so, the film is about the darkness and authenticity of black metal music and Satanism. Following Rory Culkin as Euronymous, who attempts to create the darkest of all personas, but his ego is challenged by a fan turned faux Varg. And what follows is pure chaos and horror. I want to start off by saying I loved this film, and if you're worried about going to see it and you don't know anything about Mayhem, don't be, and don't look it up because I was just shocked at every turn in this film and I think it improved the viewing for me. And like most biopics, there is a lot of gray area. You know, there's his story, his story and the truth. And I know there's a lot of gray area in the facts in this movie, but I did have some metalheads in the theater with me talking the whole time, telling me how everything was wrong, telling everyone in the audience how everything was wrong. So trust me, I am aware, but I want to tell you why this film works. Starting with the director, the film was actually set to be directed by a Japanese director in 2010, but there was some scheduling conflicts with the cast, so soon it all fell apart. In 2015, it was announced that Ukuland would go on to write the film, write his own screenplay for the film and direct it, and it was such a win for the story. And let me tell you why. He is the former drummer of Swedish extreme metal band Bathory, which helped inspire Norwegian black metal in the 1990s. He only left the band because he felt like metal was becoming too serious in Sweden during this time, which turned out really well for him. He directed Spun and he has directed a new film called Polar but he is more known for his catalog of music videos. He's directed so many music videos, everything from Madonna's Ray of Light, which won him an award. He's done videos for the Smashing Pumpkins. He's done the YouTube clip for Beautiful Day. He's worked with Ozzy Osbourne, Paul McCartney, Blink-182, Ramstein, and he even did the famous Lady Gaga video, Telephone. Seriously, the list just goes on and on and on. Look it up yourself, it's very impressive. So with his experience with working with musicians, knowing music himself, but then also him directing Spun, which has so many awards for its editing techniques, it just was like the perfect marriage and I was so glad that he got the opportunity to direct this film. But it's the characters within Lords of Chaos, which of course are based on real people, that create the story that I feel like a lot of people who love horror, and I mean anything dark, have been waiting for and they just didn't know it. <laughs> That's how I felt watching this film. It was everything that I ever wanted to see and I just didn't know it existed. And in that way, it's so original. This film visually and the factual story alone was enough to give the audience a lot to swallow. But the deeper undertone about how sick humans really are and where the line is drawn is what keeps the film moving. It's truly fearless with its content and prepare yourself because I'm not joking, there's gore, self-harm, animal torture, and it's very, very brutal. I've never seen a film in the cinema that was like this. Extremely graphic and very triggering to anyone with self-harm issues. The cast did a really good job of revealing the vulnerable moments of their characters at peaks. Not only did it give the audience the glimpse of humanity they needed to stick with the characters, it was also never breaking the facade. So with this film, you're watching the cracks slowly start forming 
until it all crumbles. And you totally know it's coming, but it's just a beautiful downfall. Really sick, right? But it is. <laughs> Rory Culkin said that the photos are what gave him the insight into his character development. He said that his character would always put on the mask of evil for these iconic photos, but in others you would see him laughing with his friends and being more human in the background. He was always showing what he wanted to be presented as to the world, and his ego was so big, but you could kind of see cracks of who he really was in the background. And I think that Culkin did an amazing job at really portraying that, and I think this is his best role thus far, really. The director knew the importance of telling the story in a relatable way, if it could be relatable. <laughs> he noted that everyone, not me, already knew the story and it was very dark and it was about satanic panic and it was really about these evil people and he wanted to strip that away and show a different side of the story. This time he wanted to show those glimpses and really remind us of how young these people were during the events and how confusing it all was. He also has stated that this screenplay is to show how how he and others outside the situation saw it. You'd think a huge part of this film, and especially the soundtrack, would be black metal, but actually, you'd be wrong, because the director didn't want to include too much black metal. He wanted to make the film for everybody, and black metal, it's like you like it or you don't like it. There's no in between. There's no putting up with it. Um, and I think that he wanted to make this film, you know, quite broad for everyone. I was shocked by this, but also, I love this because I found in the soundtrack, there was a lot of Sigaros, and Sigaros is one of my favorite bands of all time, and I liked how they obviously paired the cigars with a Scandinavian setting of the film, so it worked really well. It's very interesting to me because Sigaros' music is always put in films where they want to be ultra emotional. They use a lot of cigarettes to really drain the audience of their emotions. And with this film, which is about black metal and the portrayal of, you know, the most evil people on earth, I thought it was really interesting to use something very emotional. And I wonder, I do wonder what black metal fans think of that because it changed the whole dynamic of the story. And that might be something they're really angry about. Of course, visually the film is just amazing. And with the Scandinavian backdrop, it's not hard. But the horror flashback scenes are genuinely where I got so scared and it was terrible. I was very interested by the way they did this because they were very stylized, lots of black and white, lots of jump scares, and to take a film that was kind of shot more realistically and then to kind of jar you by putting you into those flashbacks, I thought it would totally take you out of the film, but for me it kind of worked, like exactly, and I'm not one for flashbacks, dream sequences, all that kind of stuff. I feel like sometimes it's overused, but I thought they really blended it in quite well and with the peaks of the story. They didn't put it throughout the whole film. They only put it when they really needed those character arcs and I thought it worked really well. The director said that this film is 20 years in the making and this is because a lot of people are really sensitive about the story and how it's portrayed. A lot of people feel really attached to it and the director said that personally he feels that way too and a lot of people have opinions on it. So I'm expecting a lot of kickback from this movie. There's going to be a lot of people rating it down who just don't agree with the factuality of the story but it was the director telling it through his own eyes and telling it from a different perspective from the kids being kids instead of being these great big bad wolves and I thought that was really interesting and I really liked the way he told it. This film was truly something special for me. It revealed a dark story about ego, self-image, destruction, and of course a very interesting story about crossing the line. If you want to see a film that is beautiful, heartbreaking, and terrifying all at the same time, you need to check out this film and it is playing in some cinemas at the moment so if you want to check out your local sessions first if not you can catch it on VOD in most countries not Australia but in other countries so I do really recommend don't let this one pass you by guys this is such a brutal film and if you're into brutal films you'll love this and I know you guys are as sick as I am so I know you'll really enjoy it I'm gonna give this film an 8 out of 10 I absolutely loved it I'm gonna give it a scare score of 8 it is so gory and and squirmy and oh my god I have not felt like this gore level in a long time so realistic and for originality I'm gonna give it an 8 and I know it's gonna piss a lot of people off including the real Varg who is a character in this story I didn't go too much into the characters because it's a huge spoiler but Varg <laughs> is a guy in the story and he has publicly denounced this film in his own YouTube channel. I'll give you a little clip, don't worry, it's spoiler free. When you at one point realize that uh, this film is just a lot of made up crap, I suggest you uh, contemplate around the concept a little bit and understand that I'm not the only one in history that has been exposed to their character murder. 
I hope you guys liked this video. If you did find this helpful, spoiler free, some info behind the film and what to expect going into it, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to watch my videos more regularly, subscribe. Um, I also do two videos a week, so if you're not getting those videos in your feed, just hit the bell and then you get the notification when my new videos come out. My next video is going to be Greta, so if you'd like to come with me to the cinema and see Greta, I'll have a video up and if you want to be notified, hit that bell and I'll talk to you guys very soon. Stay spooky. Bye guys.